<clears throat> In Norse mythology, Heimdall, uh, you might know him as the all-seeing black guy from the Thor movies, <laughs> had nine mothers and no father. After three years of FHE at BYU, sin. <laughs> Hallmark specials are the white people version of Tyler Perry movies. That's that whole joke. <laughs> Visiting home is super nice because I don't really like finishing my sentences anyways. Um, so I have, I have a pet peeve, uh, two of them. First one's racism. The se <laughs> and the, the second one is when people go up uh, in church and they're like, I'd like to bear my testimony. <laughs> Just do it! Bear it! <laughs> Nothing is stopping you! You bear that testimony. You welcome that high council member. Live your dreams, kids. Of all the things you could ask permission to do in a testimony meeting, bearing your testimony shouldn't be one of them. Maybe ask permission next time before you go on a 20 minute mission story with questionable doctrine. But we are all on board for the testimony. Uh, the first testimony meeting of the semester is always really fun for me. I make a lot of new friends. Uh, at least I feel like I do. I feel comfortable judging people immediately. <laughs> I wouldn't do it if you didn't make it so easy. I'm, I'm not sorry. Uh, like there's this... <laughs> Can we get a round of applause for Harry Potter guy? Harry Potter guy and his friend, the squeaky door hinge. The real Hufflepuffs of the night. <laughs> I don't even remember what it was in my joke. Uh, uh, I like the first session of the meeting of the semester. This guy came up and he was like your typical business bro. So just like get yourself in that mindset. And, and he was like, so I was reading my scriptures in the Tanner building right before my finance class. <laughs> And I had this thought, that scripture study is like protein powder for the spirit. And if you want to get spiritually swole, you cannot skimp on nutrition, bro. Like Jesus even said, I am the way. That's why my boy Dieter always has four talks on feeding, feasting on the words of Christ for every one about lifting where you stand. Anyway, if any of you are interested in protein, I'm part of this super chill startup. Talk to me after the block, okay? Amen! <laughs> so our generation has a worrying amount of phrases that translate directly to, I'm about to do something stupid. <laughs> and I feel like it's kind of like how the uh, Inuit language had over a dozen words for snow. Because if you're just surrounded by it constantly, you need to differentiate. <laughs> Like, if I'm about to throw a glass bottle into a protest, I'm not gonna say, this is a poor decision. I'm gonna say, yeet. <laughs> That's a yeet. <laughs> Am I about to eat my expired cheese because I can't afford new cheese? YOLO. <laughs> Wanna go impromptu cliff jumping? Send it. <laughs> Am I about to turn left onto 700 North? Leroy Jenkins! <laughs> so I'd like to tell you all about Menards. Menards is a Midwest thing. And it's one of the best Midwest things because we have very few things. <laughs> the best way I know how to describe Menards is its target, but for your dad. Not for men, your dad. Not for dads, your dad. Like the whole place just reeks of dad. It's some unholy combination of WD-40 and lawn trimmings and stale beef jerky. I'm pretty sure they don't even let you in the building if you've had a checkup in the last five years. Plus, the whole, the whole place is organized like a garage toolbox. Like you, uh, there's definitely some sort of pattern there, but it makes no sense to anyone. 
You walk in the front door, and the first thing you see year-round is the inflatable Christmas decorations <laughs> right next to the fire starters. <laughs> and then around the corner, there's dry mix concrete in between six packs of Pringles. <laughs> they sell two-liter bottles of extra virgin olive oil in the lumber yard. <laughs> And back inside, you can find frozen pizzas next to the antifreeze, next to a weirdly large bin of John Wayne DVDs. <laughs> and interspersed through all of this is a bunch of partially rounded men thinking, three dollars is a really good price for Halloween lawn flamingos. <laughs> it's like how if you walk into Target for hand soap, you're gonna leave with a brand new bath mat, shower curtain, vanity, and Russian nesting rubber ducks. <laughs> If you walk into Menards for hand soap, you're gonna leave with everything you need to retile your bathroom. <laughs> including the hubristic thought that you could retile your own bathroom. Uh, so I was not, I was not my last girlfriend's first boyfriend, but I was her best boyfriend. And I know this because she named all of us. There's a hot boyfriend, who is not me. <laughs> But there's also Funny Boyfriend, who is also not me. I'm Cargo Shorts Boyfriend. That was my defining attribute as a romantic partner. It's honestly one of my defining attributes as a person, so that's fine. Uh, the, the reason I'm reasonably confident that I was her favorite is because I actually brought something to the table. She was already hot and funny, she didn't need that, but that girl's pocket situation was abysmal. <laughs> that girl couldn't hold a pack of gum without my help. <laughs> or her hands. Like, these bad boys here, these can fit everything in her purse. And her purse. And her friend's purse. And two water bottles and a go box full of fried rice. I have tested it. <laughs> These are made out of the same stuff Mary Poppins uses. You wanna know how I'm so good at coping with constant failure? Cause these bad boys can fit all my baggage. Being Cargo Short's boyfriend was simultaneously my identity and my disguise. Like just imagine in the news, a cargo shorts man was seen escaping Provo First Credit Union with 1.4 million in his pockets. <laughs> the police chased him into, into the Clyde building where their whole building is on lockdown as they try to figure out which one he was. <laughs> so so I was, I was uh, talking to my sister recently about comedy stuff, and she was like, hey, have you thought about doing a set on your celebrity lookalikes? I was like, yeah, yeah, I could do that. I've been told I look like a, a B minus Eli Manning, or uh, Michael Phelps from the neck up. <laughs> and she was like, no, no, I meant like Michael Sarah or Benedict Cumberbatch. <laughs> okay, insulting, but continue. <laughs> No, 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 I was just watching this, this video about how Benvolio Cumbersome looks like an otter, and it made me think of you. <laughs> Should I be more insulted that you think I look like benefits cumulative, or that I look like an otter? <laughs> okay, you don't have to use bumblebee cucumber, but what about that Muppet you look like? <laughs> what Muppet do I look like? I'll admit that I share a face with Michael Phelps, undeniably the least attractive part of Michael Phelps. <laughs> but what Muppet could I look like to improve this? She's like, oh, I've always thought you look like a uh, Burr or maybe Beaker. <laughs> Beaker? You think I look like Beaker? Me, Beaker, me. Beaker, me, 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 me. This is the last show and I still hate myself for telling that joke. All right. Every time. Uh, um, so me, me and my family, we don't talk. I mean, we do talk. We just don't tell each other things. Like, uh, I was talking to my sister recently and she was, I asked her if she'd tried dating recently. She's like, oh yeah, I've been dating this guy for a year. 
Which is, that's the most classic Sutton move in the book. Uh, one time in high school, me and my dad were at what have, were, I'm so sorry. We were having what qualifies as the talk in my family. And he was like, so Dave, have, um, have you, um, have you kissed a girl? I was like, well, dad, I've been dating the same girl for over a year, so no. But I probably could. And he's like, okay, um, well, I guess we'll continue this conversation a year after you get married. But we, we have always been this way, my whole family. Like one time, one time, my mom had cancer. And she didn't tell any of us until after she got it removed. Yeah, what? And she, she just tried to play off with, you didn't ask. How was I supposed to know to ask? How often should I be saying the words, do you have cancer, mom? That's now replaced goodbye in our Skype calls, unfortunately. It's good to see your faces. Tell the Wickhams I love them. Do you have cancer? I know after, I know after this gets posted on the internet, uh, someone from my family is going to be like, Dave, you should have told us you were going to make fun of us in front of strangers. Well, they didn't ask. Thanks, guys.